Hey everybody, it's Pastor Billy here. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity Luther and I welcome you to worship today as we worship online, continuing our series, All Nations, One in Christ. Just a couple of quick announcements for you today before we begin that worship service. Uh, We're starting on September 13th something called the Being Challenge. And with that, you might notice uh, we're distributing right now Being Challenge books to each household. It should look like this where you see a gray bag with the red Trinity Lutheran logo on front. And that is your Being Challenge book. And uh, we're getting excited to join together in a daily challenge, kind of like the Red Letter Challenge last year. Last year, the Red Letter Challenge answered the question, how do we follow Jesus? And we learned by being, forgiving, serving, wait, being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. And this year, what we're saying is, well, how do we grow in our relationship with Jesus by being? And so we're going to spend 40 days learning more about that with the Being Challenge, and we're excited for you to join along with us. Be looking for your book. If you don't get one before September 13th, please let us know. Uh, It's quite possible that we didn't have the right address or whatever, and we want to make sure we get one of these into your hands so your family can join us on this adventure. If you want to know more about this, uh, joining a huddle, getting an additional book, uh, getting the Kids Being Challenged book, you can go to our website, trendluth.org, and uh, we'll have that information uh, highlighted for you so that you can get to the Being Challenged page on our website. One big second announcement that's kind of attached to this one is that when we're starting this Being Challenge on September 13th, we're going to do outdoor worship in person together, kind of like we did with our last two outdoor worship services every week of the Being Challenge. And so that's, that's our goal, uh, weather permitting, that we'll meet at our Hamilton site just like we did before, and that we'll join in worship together in person, outdoors. And I can't wait to start that challenge together and appreciate gathering together in worship in that way. With all of that being said, we're going to join together now with our voices singing Lift High the Cross.
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority alone, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I am Thomas Worsing, and I have the privilege of sharing the New Testament reading with you today. The reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Please follow along with whatever Bible you have there with you. We begin on the 11th verse. Because we understand our faithful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us, so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems we are crazy, It is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering of our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, we'll join together with one voice, no matter where we find ourselves worshiping today, confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. I am so thankful that I live in a world without conflict. Everyone is accepted no matter what they look like, no matter where they are from. Everyone's opinion, even political opinions, are accepted. No one ever speaks harsh words, whether that's face to face or sending them out online. And everyone's words are always completely understood with the best of intentions and everyone everyone loves Christians and even within the church there is absolutely no conflict and because there's no conflict there's really no need to hear a message from God's Word today and so I want to thank you for being with us enjoy the rest of your worship service and wait what so my producer is sharing that there really is conflict. Is that right? Okay, well, I'm shocked. I was not expecting that. Uh, so, all right, so we're going to change tracks here a little bit. So, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father who calls all people to be reconciled to him to be reconciled with each other and to live in unity in the message of our Lord and Savior, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So there is conflict. There is a need for reconciliation with us, with God, and also with each other. And I guess, yeah, I should not be shocked. Maybe. I pretended that I lived within these four walls for a long time and I never saw conflict, never involved in conflict. Not shocked. And Paul was not shocked either when he wrote two letters to the churches in that town, that city of Corneth. And it's important for us to understand this is the second letter that we looked at today, chapter 5, the second letter where Paul takes a little bit of a different track from what he did in the first letter. The first letter, Paul addresses very clearly, some might say very strongly, the conflict that was going on 
within the church and also within the city what were some of those conflict but there's a problem with relationships how people treated each other and even to the point where Paul says Christians are taking other Christians to court there was also a problem of false super apostles who were trying to become the experts in the gospel message and really making that their own message and creating a, com a conflict with what the gospel was about and a competition between the true church, the gospel, and what they were proposing. Egos were getting in the way, and I know that never happens in our perfect conflict-free world, right? Egos were getting in the way. The gospel was being dropped at the sake and for the sake of human reason and human wisdom. Some people believed that they had outgrown the simplicity of the gospel. And Paul reminds them in that first letter that a weak conscience, in other words, a conscience that continually needs to be guided by the Holy Spirit and by the gospel message, that weak conscience needs to keep coming back to the simple message of reconciliation. And so in what we would divide up today in the second letter, chapters three, four, and five, Paul writes some extent to those false apostles, but also to those who choose to follow them, to believe in them, a reminder that God has given many gifts to the church and that those gifts are to be used for building up the church. And when the church is built up and the church lives in reconciliation and unity, then the message of the gospel goes out to others so that they too hear the message of reconciliation with God and with each other. And Paul says, of all those gifts that God has given to you, to the church, the greatest of those gifts is love. So here in our text for today, Paul is asking the false apostles, the people who would follow them, to remember to be reconciled to God, to come back to God. And notice that Paul's first word in verse 11, because. If you have a different translation, it might read two words, since then. Since then, what? Because what? In verse 10, Paul had explained to the people, to us, pointed out that each of us will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And the verdict before that judgment seat will be good or bad, heaven or hell. And each will receive in accordance to what he did while in this body, whether good or bad. Now, let's remember, Paul in other places is very consistent and very straightforward in saying this is not based on works. This is based on the inheritance that God gave you through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So what's Paul trying to get across? Paul reminds the church them and reminds us today that we are to be about sharing the gospel. We are ambassadors of the gospel and leave no doubt it is hard work some days to be an ambassador of that gospel. And so what Paul is telling the people, he has worked hard. He had no ego in this other than to do what God would have him do. And Paul says it's hard work to be that ambassador because the ambassador is the one who is evaluated on his words 
evaluate it by his actions, and evaluate it by how he listens to what others may say. And so by words, by action, by listening, the ambassador of the gospel is one who opens doors so that others want to know more. And when those doors are open, the Holy Spirit can bring its work to completion. Paul says, for him, those other ambassadors, and hopefully for us, it is Christ's love that urges us. Christ's love that really controls us, Paul says. And what he is saying, I think, is, is two parts of that love. One is Christ's love for us, and the other part is our love for Christ. Because of both of those things working together, we are ambassadors who want to go out and with our words, with our action, with our listening, open the door for others to be reconciled to God and reconciled with each other. So a question to consider is, what are you willing to give? What are you willing to give to someone else so that door can be open and the Holy Spirit has its best shot to be able to bring its work of reconciliation to completion. In 1970, the New York Knicks won the National Basketball Association World Championship, and a member of that championship team was Bill Bradley. Bill Bradley, after his playing career, became a United States Senator. He was elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And at one point, he also ran for the presidency of the United States. And so he was asked in an interview, what comparison might you make between that team and what they accomplished and what's going on right now with the pandemic? And one of the things he said was each person, each person was one point on a five point star. And it was the selflessness and the unity and the success that captured people's imagination. He was also asked in that interview based on a book that he had written, Values of the Game, how might we see, how might he compare some of those values that are learned in sports, especially with that championship team, how might that compare to the political climate we're in now? And how might that compare to some issues, especially a big issue today of race relations and tension and conflict going on in the world today? And not only how does it compare to those things, but how might it be useful for us to consider those things, to learn and to improve those things? And so he said this, he said, selflessness is something that you are in control of. Unity is not. If you are selfless, you can control your actions and what those actions might lead to. It, unity, requires other people. You can be selfless, but you can't force other people to be unified. What people need to see, what people need to see, is why it is good for them to be unified. Why it is good for them to be unified. So it's here, it's here that I would like us to focus on verse 16 of the second letter to the Corinthians in chapter five. Back in that first letter, okay, remember Paul says, I don't care, I don't care if I'm judged by you, I don't care if I'm judged by the courts, I will be judged by God. 
And Paul points out that we should not evaluate, we should not judge people based on a human point of view. Paul, when he was Saul, did that exact thing with Jesus and determined that Jesus could no way be the Savior. And other people, other leaders at that time did the same thing. But now Paul says, I know him different. I know him better. I see him for who he really was. And so I think about that and I think you know, question for you, a question that I have asked myself is, are there situations and are there people that you at one point evaluated based on a human point of view? And did you then learn that that situation, those people maybe are different, that you know them better now? There is room for us to all grow in understanding of situations, understanding of people and seeking reconciliation. And one of the problems we all have is if we stay within our own four walls, we will not see ourselves any differently. We will not see our neighbors differently. We will not see situations differently. And we will not see Jesus differently. We may feel that we have even outgrown the simplicity, the need for that Savior, that Messiah, Jesus. So Paul encourages us to no longer evaluate people from a human point of view, but to evaluate them from the point of view that Jesus had when he hung up on a cross in his selflessness, Paul did not look at what he could get from other people, but he looked at what he could give to other people. The simple message of Christ the Crucified. One of the songs from the musical Hamilton, The Room Where It Happens. And as I saw that and learn more about the lyrics and appreciated the lyrics more, I start to think we all want to be in the room where it happens. And that means you want to be in that room. Everyone you encounter wants to be in that room where it happens. The room where it happens is where words of kindness are shared. The room where it happens are where questions are asked to help understand someone's life and situation better. The room where it happens is where joy is multiplied and burdens divided. And the room where it happens is where reconciliation takes place. This hotel room is one of those rooms that has a door that a, a adjoins um, two different rooms. And maybe some of you have stayed in those rooms different times and maybe been curious what's on the other side or who is on the other side. If this door, if this door remains locked and closed, be shut forever. But you can choose, you can choose to be selfless and take a chance and open up that door. And you have no idea, you have no idea what or who, what or who is on the other side of that door. You don't know if your efforts to open that door, to knock on that door, how they'll be met. Maybe that door on the other side will never be opened. Maybe you'll be surprised. Maybe you'll be shocked at what you find on that other side of the door. There may never be unity between these two rooms. But what I do know, what I do know is if 
I don't take a chance if I am not selfless in my questions, my words, my actions, my listening. This door will never be open. One thing I do know too is that whatever's on the other side of that room, that door, will be twice as large as my room. And so I invite you, I invite you to continue to grow, to continue to grow in evaluating people, situations from the eyes, the ears of the Savior Jesus Christ to see what doors he will open and to multiply the work of reconciliation through the Holy Spirit. That is my prayer for you and that is my prayer for me as well. I have another thing I want to share with you and we're going to go somewhere else to do that. I don't know if you've ever thought of a cemetery as being a beautiful place. But when I first saw this place some months ago, I could not get over how beautiful it was. And there were certain things about it that I think help us connect to what Paul was trying to get across to us in his letter, the second letter to the Corinthians. This is a big place. It's a beautiful place because it's well maintained and there's a certain uniformity to this place. And as I look around, as I drive around, it makes an impact on me from the standpoint of there are people here, men, women, from all different places, all different types of men and women. And these are people that Christ died for. Christ died for all. And when Christ has died for all, all he has died for no longer live for themselves, but they live for him. And when Christ was raised from the dead, he was raised from the dead for all. So as we think about the uniformity of a place like this. Remember, Paul writes on behalf of God that God wants all people to be reconciled to him. And God wants all people to be reconciled to each other because of that uniformity of their faith in Jesus Christ. That word reconcile originally in the Greek was something that was used to describe what money changers would do in taking currency from one and making it applicable to another place. That later became used, reconciled, in relationship to people. Five times in the closing verses that we looked at today from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, five times depending on your translation, Paul uses a word reconcile or reconciliation. Your translation may have some different ways to describe that. But what's important is God wants all people to be reconciled to him. God wants all people to be reconciled to each other. And this is a wonderful picture. Each of these people here, each of these men and women were loved by someone. And they are here. Each of these men and women were loved by God, and Jesus died for each one of them. Another song from Hamilton says, I'm not going to miss my shot. And so as we think about those words that Paul wrote, standing before the judgment of Jesus Christ, and looking at the life that he has given to us to bring people to reconciliation with God, to bring reconciliation to each other, let's not miss our shot. Let's tell and show 
the world, how God has reconciled himself to us. Let us tell and show the world how they too can be reconciled with God and how they can be reconciled with each other. That is my prayer from Paul's words in 2 Corinthians. I pray that you will open up the room for others to be in and I pray that you will take advantage of the shot that you have in this life to be that ambassador of the gospel. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. It's at this time in our worship that we will gather our offering and in the absence of doing that on site here today, we would encourage you to do that online. Uh, you can go to trinluth.org slash give and you'll see all of the online ways uh, that you're able to give your offering today. And uh, we are grateful, very grateful for those who are continuing to contribute to the ministry efforts of Trinity Lutheran, partnering in our effort to share the forgiveness and love of the resurrected Christ with our neighbors. Uh, you can also text to give. That number is there online. And uh, if you're more comfortable mailing your offering into the office, we certainly could receive it that way as well as you mail it into the church office. In addition to your online giving, we also would love to know who's worshiping with us today. So please register your worship attendance at trinluth.org slash online worship attendance. And it's there that you can also share your specific prayer requests with us uh, each week. And we'd love to be lifting you up in prayer as well. At this time, we'll join together in singing for the fruits of his creation. Please join me now as we lift up the prayers of the church and also the specific prayers that you have shared with us throughout this past week. Let's bow our hearts and our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we lift up before you our country as it experiences division among several different people groups. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be instruments of peace and reconciliation. Help us to draw closer to you, Lord, and therefore closer to each other each day. Lord, we pray for all who anticipate the landfall of Hurricane Laura in the Gulf of Mexico. We pray that you would provide protection and peace to those who are hunkering down and, and living through the storm. Lord, for those that are especially in danger and harm's way, we pray, God, that you would Give them the ability to get out and to find a safer location until this storm passes. Lord, where there will be destruction, we pray, God, that 
you would send and mobilize your people swiftly to respond to the needs of the community that arise. Lord, we pray for those in our community that are in need of an extra measure of care and healing. Specifically, we pray for Karen DeVerry, Todd Ropp, David Merritt, Kathy Nowak, Joe Walden, Lyle and, and Diane Edwards, and Lord, the many others that, that ultimately don't make it onto a specific prayer list spoken out loud, but, but that are on our prayer lists, our private ones each day. Lord, for some, uh, there are ongoing medical concerns that are happening. There are surgeries that they, they are recovering from, and, and for some, they're They're awaiting the results of tests to see what are the next steps. And we pray, God, that your presence would be known in the midst of all of that. And, Lord, that they would experience your care. Lord, that you would send your people to divide the burden uh, that they are carrying. We also pray, Lord, for those who are in need of comfort and peace. Uh, There are several families this week, Lord, that are mourning the loss of loved ones. We specifically pray for Ron Beer and family upon the death of his brother Bob and for the family and friends of Keith Watkins who passed away. For each of these families who experience mourning and despair, we pray, God, that you would give an extra measure of your peace and your comfort, Lord, that surpasses all human understanding. And help us, Lord, to know as a community how we can continue to be shining a a glimpse of your light of Christ into into this darkness that they are experiencing. Lord, for our students and teachers and parents in the community that are navigating the beginning of this school year with all of the ways things have changed in response to COVID-19, we pray that each would know your presence, your love, and your peace in the days and weeks ahead, that you would give an extra measure of endurance while, while many people are experiencing just the emotional uh, expense of, of experiencing so much change all at once. For those who are, are missing that interaction with their peers each day, we pray, God, that you would provide a deep companionship for them in some way. For those who are meeting in person and, and, and are dealing with uh, the, the fear that comes with always being on guard from COVID-19, we pray, God, that you would give them peace And Lord, we pray that in the midst of all of the variety of circumstances, people would understand that you are there at work each and every day. May we experience your presence in a powerful way, and may that be an encouragement to us to carry forward one day at a time. Heavenly Father, when all of our specific prayer requests run out and we have no words to say, we're grateful that our Lord Jesus Christ taught his followers to pray a prayer. And so we join together now in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, we're wrestling with the reality that uh, we are a sending congregation, and right now as we're all deployed to the various locations that we find ourselves each day, we go with this, the very words that Jesus shared with his disciples. He came to them after the resurrection and, and appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, now I am sending you. And so as you are sent by God, we give you this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. At this time we'll join together in singing our final hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And we just want to remind you to stick around Uh, because there will be a kid's corner uh, coming to you for for your family and your kiddos to gather back around and and receive uh, the Word of God again for them.
Hi everyone, this is Pastor David, and this is my first Kids Corner. I am so excited. Uh, my family and I have been here almost a month. Uh, I've met many of you, but not all, and I look forward to meeting you soon. Uh, we lived in St. Louis for 16 years, but before I moved to St. Louis, I lived here in the Bloomington Normal area. I grew up in what I call a suburb of Shirley, Illinois. I went to Normal Community High School, and then I graduated from Illinois State, both with a bachelor's and a master's. I ended up teaching there for 10 years. My son, Lyle, who now goes to college in Wisconsin, spent his freshman year at Illinois State. Oh, and one other thing. What sometimes people find interesting is that for five years, I had the privilege of being Reggie the Redbird. It was a lot of fun. And I wanna show you something that I found as I was packing for St. Louis. This is a megaphone that we used, uh, the cheerleaders, and then Reggie, uh, when I was a student. You'll notice it's an old school logo. Megaphones are fun, aren't they? You can just shout out, go team! Sometimes, you know, if you're a little lazy and mom asks you, hey, can you ask your brother to come up? Come on up! And, you know, but there are some times, right, when it's not appropriate to use a megaphone. Waking up mom and dad with something like this, probably not a good idea. I want to read to you, this is a passage, a verse uh, from the passage that Pastor Bond just preached on. We are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. That's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. We are Christ's ambassadors. Ambassador is a, a big term for simply saying, we get to share the message. We get to tell others. And we are ambassadors for Jesus, our Savior. We get to tell people how much he loves them. We get to tell people about his forgiveness and love. We get to make disciples. And sometimes we might be tempted to use a megaphone to tell others. And sometimes a megaphone or a microphone, sometimes those things are appropriate but other times they're not. What if one of our friends has been drifting away from God, maybe not praying or going to church, talking through this? Probably not the right way. What if a friend hurt us or a friend we love? Probably not the right way. See, sometimes to be Christ's ambassadors, we get to go up to the person. We get to take that first step. And sometimes that first step is hard, but God blesses us through it. He gives us the words. I wanna encourage each of us today, no matter our ages, to take that first step, to be an ambassador, a messenger of Jesus, telling others about his forgiveness and love and showing it. We are Christ's ambassadors. Would you join me for prayer? 
Dear God, we thank and praise you that we get to be messengers for Jesus. Help us to love others. Help us to encourage them. Help us to speak your words of love and forgiveness. And Father, thank you for loving and forgiving us. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's do a loud shout out to Pastor David for taking a time out to bring the message home to your family. Well, I do not have Reggie Redbird, but I do have Clifford the Red Dog. Say hi. All right, well, all this red talk is reminding me that last year we did the Red Letter Challenge. This year we're doing the Being Challenge, which comes from the Red Letter Challenge. And I'm gonna encourage you to check out trinluth.org, Being Challenge Kids, where you can find out about getting a kids workbook, and also what's gonna take place at Kids Corner. It's gonna be called Being Challenge Kids Roundup, and you don't wanna miss it. All right, well, let's talk about that message that was delivered to us and some questions that we can share to process about that. So number one, what is one way that you can share the love and forgiveness with someone? Number two, Pastor David encouraged us to take the first step in being a messenger of Jesus. Why is it hard to make the first move? And number three, who is someone that has been a messenger of Jesus for you and how can you thank them? Well, this is a great message. We've got the message of Jesus and we do need to get it out there, out into the streets, literally. <laughs> so God bless you and have a great day.